What is up guys, Zan from Playbook.gg here with AntCap again for our Friday film study. AntCap, what's going on, man? I'm doing great. Thanks, Zan. Uh, this is actually one that I'm really excited to talk about because of the, the matchup that we had Friday Night Football in the championship game with Decroft versus Clef, two of the most exciting players that we've had so far. Before we dive into this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the great tutorials that we've got headed your way here on the playbook.gg YouTube channel. And we are back and right into the action, Clef the God versus D. Croft. Now we got some storylines here with these two players, Ancap. Absolutely, you got two of the most successful Friday Night Football competitors that we've got into this game. You've got Decroft riding a 14-game winning streak with a, a record of 17 and two, and then you've got Clef at 17 and six. Two of the best competitors we've had in this tournament. And with this matchup being a final matchup, uh, obviously. Clef has been somebody that we've seen quite a bit in Friday Night Football. He's made, I believe, this is his third final that we're watching here. And he was, I believe, 0-2 in his previous two finals. So he's looking for his first Friday Night Football championship. On the other side, we have Clef, who is also in his third championship. But he is looking for his third win. Not only his third win in three attempts, but he's looking for three in a row. Yeah, Decroft is coming off of a, an incredible run, something that we have not seen yet. With 14 straight wins, he won, obviously, the, the five. You got to win in order to win the tournament. Um, he won that twice in a row, and now he's in a four-game winning streak in this actual tournament to get to the championship game. Just a phenomenal run, putting himself on the map as one of the toughest players in Madden right now. Yeah, Decroft is certainly, uh, this is a player we talked about last week. He was in the finals against Skins, who was one of the Washington Redskins club series competitors ultimately goes madden a player that has been in a number of our mutthead madden esports events uh won that club series championship but uh skins was relatively unknown outside that club series went into the finals last week against decroft and uh decroft ended up coming out on top but it was a pretty good ball game but last week we were just kind of talking like decroft looks like he's playing the best football best madden football in our community right now he absolutely is. And uh, just to ch jump on the screen right now to talk about something that's going on. As you can see, Decroft went ahead and stopped Clef right away. He gets the ball back here. And Clef went ahead and accepted the um, penalty for delay of game. I just want to see if we can talk about that for a second. How, how do you feel about that? Yeah, personally, I... I'm, I'm going to be frank. Uh, you know, I respect the hell out of Clef. Um, he's a great competitor. I've got nothing but great things to say about him. I think that, you know, there's been kind of a gentleman's agreement all year long about, you know, accepting audible or accepting the penalty when somebody's trying to set their audibles. I think that, you know, there is no rule. Obviously, with, I'm the esports program manager for Mutthead. There is no rule against um, accepting that penalty. Uh, it's one of those things where on the MCS stage, you usually see a gentleman's agreement. I think it's a situation right there where Clef was probably frustrated and uh, went ahead and accepted the penalty and Decroft was not expecting that. Absolutely. I think that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking right in the same lines as you are. Um, you know, Decroft did an amazing job of holding Clef in that first drive. He comes out and he gets in a penalty where now he's starting first and 15. I think it was more of a psychological move than anything from Clef's side because you can see that Decroft, his main way of moving the ball is in the ground. And if he's starting first and 15 and then he ended up only getting one yard on that first play, second and 14, he's out of his, um, you know, his strategy as a player. And it took the momentum that he had and basically shifted it right back to Clef. It almost as if they uh, traded off possessions because of that. And, and um, you know, it's hard to tell being able to, you know, see what was in the mind of Croft, but it definitely looked like it affected him on that first drive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this is a great time for you guys in the chat, not only the chat, the uh, obviously we're live on Twitch uh, for these broadcasts, but you guys in the comment section here on the YouTube channel, um, let us know what you think about that whole situation. You know, we're not here to bury anybody. We're trying to obviously run the most balanced and competitive esports initiative out there. This is our tournament for the community, by the community, as we kind of dubbed it over the last couple of weeks. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Should this be something that is basically a mandatory uh, decline. Do you feel like MCS, not just us, do you feel like the MCS should make that a rule? Um, what do you What do you personally think, Ancap? 
I think there's a, you know, there's limitations in the game that, you know, from a competitive standpoint, EA, the MCS needs to realize and, you know, kind of set things up in the beginning, you know, um, 10 second runoff rules is one of those deals, right? The game does not allow for, um, you know, you can manipulate that runoff rule. So they, they took it away. I feel like this is something that that's part of that type of um, same situation to where you just make it in the beginning of the game that everybody gets one delay of game on your first offensive possession um, and make it across the board. I know it takes a little bit more time and it's a little bit, you know, um, different for a broadcasting standpoint, but when it becomes part of, you know, every uh, game occurrence, I think people just get used to it and they just should abide by that rule. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally with you. I, I personally, if I were a competitor, of course, I'm not really a competitor anymore. I kind of switched into the content realm back in 2013, 2014. I kind of dabble and, you know, I know these guys well. I played these guys on leaderboards. It's always one of those things when you're grinding, you know, Monday through Friday up until, you know, single elim start. You know, it's always one of those things where even guys you don't know, you might run up against like Stealthy Potato 423 and you know it's somebody on a Lurk account. And you take your delay a game and they, even on the, the lurk account, they'll still decline the penalty because they know it's like, you know, I want, I want to be able to set my audibles too. But on the flip, on the flip side, Clef is a one, he's a one possess, he's a one formation guy. So his audibles take like two seconds for him and he's done. Yeah, it's definitely got to be something that, you know, he doesn't mm-hmm. take advantage of it. So because of that, does that give him the right to not go ahead and give the the opportunity to his to his opponent and then it's a tough question because you know not everybody's in the same boat because of it but i think from a growing the esport uh perspective making sure that we have gentlemen's bets and we don't have the friction that you would want i think you 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 just go ahead and you decline the penalty and you move on um you know again no written rule about it so you know there's nothing that you could you know penalize the person from doing it it's just i think that just creates a little bit more tension when when the game starts yeah and i mean uh, of course like i said there's no rule against it Uh, this is something that it's definitely we're talking about we definitely want to know the community's input on this as well um but i think that we go back i believe it was friday night football number two or three uh he played a game against the detroit lions club series champion uh shout outs to bugs uh allowing mckinley status to win the uh, the uh the lions club series but uh, he, nice uh but uh actually no I, i'm lying he was playing lacy jackson which is somebody that books yeah. knows well as well and um and basically there was a a very fluky roughing the punter call and clef wanted that penalty declined which would have basically given him the ball instead of being on defense for first and 10 after the the personal foul and there was no rule against it then either. So, you know, he's just playing He's just playing to the hand that he's dealt at that point. You know, um, mm-hmm. obviously with $1,000 on the line, you know, you want to maximize, you know, there, you want to maximize any chance that you can have to, to win the money. And I totally understand that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that, you know, that's why it is a conversation of topic. You know, it's something that's in that gray area that, um, you know, some people feel one way about it and other feels, you know, a different way. Um, you know, there's, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. It's just one of those things that as a community, if we can get on the same page, we wouldn't have to have, you know, that, um, uh, that, that type of tension that I mentioned earlier that you could have in the game and you can see how it affected. This is the first quarter here. And, um, you saw that Clef had two possessions, uh, and, and finally gets on the board, but, uh, you know, would we be looking at a different start of the game if, uh, if Decroft was able to start off the way he wants to play offense? So we finally get points on the board here with five seconds to go in the first quarter. Clef puts the field goal through. And, uh, you know, we're kind of seeing uh, right here a very defensive battle to start this ball game. Obviously, the uh, the turnover early in the game uh, gets Clef the ball. Um, and then, I'm sorry, uh, basically the delay of game essentially puts Decroft by the sticks and then he's able to punt the ball back to uh to Clef. Clef didn't score on his first possession, finally breaks through at the end of the first quarter. Now you're heading into the second quarter and Decroft has really not gotten anything going and a quarter of the game has already gone through. Yeah, this is kind of one of those things but I'm not sure that the momentum or the advantage still isn't in Decroft's favor. He's held them in two possessions to only three points he hasn't showed a whole lot of his offense of what he wants to do yet so he's kind of has a little bit of an opportunity where he's made cleft work very hard for three points over two possessions so 
in my mind right now, you know, Decroft just needs to get three here and, and, and get himself back into the game, kind of get over that first uh, series in which, you know, uh, kind of affected him a little bit and, and just kind of, uh, you know, get that momentum back. He's running this 3-3-5 defense, getting really aggressive with it. You see he's going to pull that slot corner in. You can check out our game plan on playbook.gg. We've got a 3-3-5 game plan, some unique coverage stuff to go with some of this meta blitz. Uh, but the other thing he does in his his cover two defense, you notice he's swinging that corner or that uh, Deion Sanders, a cornerback at safety, swinging him way wide towards the sideline to make sure that he can't throw that fade. We've seen Decroft throw that fade a number of times against cover two off of play action. So I think that's really good film study by Clef. Absolutely. You know, this preparation is, is something that, um, you know, makes a lot of the pro players what they are when it comes to, uh, you know, what they're doing before the games. And it, it's a testament to Decroft, to be honest, if, if you know, if Clef is putting time to take a look at what Decroft's done in the past, that means, you know, that he knows he's a threat. He's somebody that he expects to be in a final four matchup, a final matchup, you know, putting in that time and effort to do it now. Um, especially with the last chance qualifier coming up, they've got the ability that these two could easily um, be a you know final four or, or, or championship matchup of how well they're playing right now. That also brings up a really good point. I, I just want to give a shout out to all these competitive players that have been playing in Friday Night Football over the last, uh, what, this was Friday Night Football number... T uh, 10. 10. So mm -hmm. yeah, 10 weeks already have come and gone. These guys have been grinding last chance qualifiers at the same time. So, uh, you know, there's a number of players out there that want to remain low key. Uh, you know, guys like Decroft, guys like uh, Clef, they know and they're confident that they're the best in the world and they don't care if people see what they do because they're just going to go out and adjust. And, um, you know, I, I totally get the approach by some competitive players to remain low key. You know, it makes sense for guys that are already locked in for the Madden Bowl to remain low key. But, you know, like we talked about, this is the tournament for the community by the community. And, um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not trying to say like if MCS were to go anywhere, uh, we all hope it doesn't. That's a that's an amazing thing for Madden Esports. But like, you know, these guys are doing their best to bro to grow their personal brands. Absolutely. I think that's definitely a testament to these guys. You know, Decroft has made a name for himself over the last four weeks that has reached a, a larger audience than he ever would if he did not play in this tournament. Clef in the same way. I mean, he's um, kind of new on the scene this year in the MCS standpoint. You know, he was kind of a guy that, you know, the, the June goon of last year where, you know, he was playing a lot of games, you know, um, in other people's streams. And, and he made, you know, the club championship with the uh, the Buccaneers, but he didn't make a long, you know, deep run in that to really get a lot of name recognition. He's doing that in this tournament here with Friday Night Football. And the two of these guys have, have definitely um, elevated their audiences. And, and, and by taking that risk of putting their game out there, uh, I, I feel like this is what more players should do in order to grow the eSport of Madden. Because the more people are familiar with you as a player, the more people are going to want to tune in when you play. And I think it's, it's, it's kudos to these guys of, of understanding that the big picture when it comes to competitive Madden. Absolutely. I think that when you look at competitive Madden, there's kind of this rock in a hard place approach for competitive players. A lot of players don't want to go on YouTube. They don't want to go on Twitch and expose what they run because they want to remain low key. We talked about that just uh, you know a minute ago, but at the same time, some of these competitive players also turn around and they say, we want more money from EA from an MCS standpoint. And, you know, as somebody who, you know, has been working, you know, with Mutthead to help put on these events, you know, I'm, I'm not lying when I say this. S sponsors only exist if there are people that have eyes on the event. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of that rock in the hard place thing in, in a sense that, like, I get it. You don't want to show your offense. You don't want to show your defense. But at the same time, you can't turn around and ask for more money from the purse for the competitive events when you don't have a personal brand. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And I think that's something that, you know, it's a short sighted view of it. Um, you want to give yourself the best opportunity to win what money is current, but you're not looking at the future of how do we get our million dollar, million dollar for whatever it is this year, prize pool to the next level. And, you know, sometimes you have to give a little to get more for the whole community. And, you know, the, the biggest names out there um, that have the opportunity to draw those crowds need to really, you know, look at it and say, you know what? Do I want to be playing for a two hundred fifty thousand dollar prize pool or a five hundred thousand dollar prize pool? Even though it, yeah, may show a play here or there, 
you control what you want to what you want to put on stream as far as what you do if you got two or three plays that you want to keep in your back pocket by all means that's something that you can go ahead and, and do so i mean you're in control of that i just I, I feel like that people need to kind of look at the bigger picture and, and uh hopefully we'll see that as, as the year goes on and how and madden 20 starts next year so we had a lot of action just go on there uh we saw d croft punch it in and then just like that prime time down the left sideline untouched for a touchdown now d croft has to go back to work on offense again after a trying drive that's the worst feeling in competitive madden Absolutely. I just got done talking about how I felt that D. Croft was in a good position. He made Clef work for everything in the first two possessions. You know, even though he uh, he came he was up three to nothing, it felt like you know D. Croft had a, a kind of beat on what he was doing on offense. Being able to now have literally probably about a fifteen minute delay in actual time from when you had to defend him to when you're going to have to defend him again. That's a long time of, of momentum there, and just giving that free seven points on the on the kickoff. Just that, that's just one of those things that uh, can, can change a game for you. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how Decroft responds in it. So now we're seeing a defensive formation switch. We actually saw Clef go to this formation late in the drive, especially in the red zone last drive. And uh, that's the big nickel over G. And, um, you know, this is a defense that, uh, believe it or not, you and I, uh, by the time this video gets uploaded, it's safe to uh, let the cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. well, we got some unique stuff out of the Big Nickel over G. It's a very meta formation, but we're doing some kind of unique stuff defensively on Playbook GG with this formation. Absolutely. I think that's one of those things where a lot of times, you know, you've got metas out there that people will run and run, and, and, and people don't want to go below the surface to find things that are even, you know, how can we make this a little better? How can we take something that's great with the, you know, the loop and the block shed and and get even better coverage behind it? You know, um, we, we've done a, uh, our due diligence of saying, you know, how can we improve on some things? And I, I think that people should be real excited about uh, some of the stuff that we just put out that you'll be able to see after, um, you know, this this video has been up. Yeah, so make sure you guys are checking out playbook.gg. $9.95 a month will get you access to everything on the website. And we're talking, I think we're at 25 game plans. We got money plays for all 30, uh, 32 NFL teams. And we have an 850 plus member Discord to give you live interaction with not only the other members of Playbook GG Nation, but some of the pros that we bring on the website. It's not just your voice and my voice on the site. I mean, it is just your voice and my voice on the site, but we are also breaking down content from pro players. You know, for instance, Clef. Um, he's on the site. You know, we've had Madden champions in the past, like Dubby. Um, you know, Beast Mode Mac has won a belt. He's been on the website. Um, you know, a lot of great players. And, um, you know, so definitely check that out. Nine ninety five a month. You're not going to find a better deal out there. I mean, I challenge you guys to go out and, and do do your diligence. Go out there and, and source the market against what we have to offer. I guarantee you, you're not going to find a better deal. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, for those that don't know how we handle our pros, um, it's not that we, we scout them and then we go ahead and we know we reproduce what they are doing. We have actually live labbing events that we get in their heads, ask them all the questions, find out exactly what they do, how they do it. And they basically, we're just their voice when we do these game plans. So um, when you get a Dubby's plan or you get a K-Max plan or a Shakobi's plan, it's because they went step by step with us and explained it and then you just hear our voice over because it's just easier for us to make sure that we uh you know have the equipment to make sure that it's a professional type of um ability to, to um make the, the the game plan what it is for you and i i think that was really great clock management there by d croft he's able to punch the field goal through tie it up going into half and squib kick it doesn't want to give up another kick return to dion and that's going to take us to half 10 10 ball game yeah, definitely, definitely a, a great uh, response for for D. Croft in that last drive by getting three in the board late, making sure that he uh, doesn't allow you know anything of a deep return. Gets the ball here. So what started off as maybe a little bit of a shaky start at, at this point, D. Croft definitely has the momentum, and it's his game right now to you know put the pressure back onto Clef. Now, I want to go ahead and go back to a conversation that we were having. There's a lot of action that happened in the middle of it, but I want to go back and revisit it. We're talking about players growing their brains. I think that's a great topic for today's uh, film study as we're watching this really great final between these two players of $1,000 winner take all. Um, but I think, you know, we started Mutthead Esports for Madden uh, at 
basically the end uh, of Madden 17. Um, in fact, I was a competitor back then in, in the original B-Dubs Bowl. And um, I, I declined keeping my position for in the league for two reasons. One, I felt that there were better, more competitive, huge interception right there by oh, Ron yeah. Parker. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I felt that there were better and more deserving players than myself out there. So I actually stepped down as a competitor, uh, made that conscious decision to no longer really compete. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy playing competitive style games, but, um, you know, and I became the esports program manager. And originally, you know, a lot of these competitive players were calling Mutthead the NIT of competitive Madden. Uh, NIT is obviously the secondary college basketball tournament to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I am. And uh, when the MCS is, is, the, is the main show, obviously, I can understand why somebody would go into that. But let me let me talk a little bit about this Friday night football that we've had this year. I mean, we've had 93 people compete. OK, we've had 10 different um, tournaments that we've hosted of those 93, we've got only 25 people that have a winning percentage of over 50%. Let me just break that down for you for a second because we means that we basically have 60 people that aren't above 500 in a winning percentage. The competition that we put in this is second to none. Um, these are invites. These are you know people that go ahead and fill out a form that have had a good resume in the community. And I mean, if you look down the board of people that aren't 50% uh, winning percentage, I mean, there's some of the top names out there, you know, uh, I'll just name a couple just to kind of not, you know, call them out, but just kind of show you some of the names that are out there. Pavan, he just won the uh, club championship. He's not at 50%. Sirius Mo, that's typically one of the players that, you know, is in, um, you know, the MCS uh, decision you back know, to back to back Mutthead League champion seriously exactly mode. he's not at 50 percent you've got um you know people you know like prodigy that you see at the final four all the time these guys are in the Madden bowl you know they're not in 50 percent in our tournaments you know wind goats chaoses you know akg drags these are all household names that you know um uh, and it just talks to two things how competitive our friday night football tournaments are and how impressive Clef and Decroft have been through this run of playing all this competition week in and week out and having the impressive records that we talked about earlier in, in, in the uh, in the broadcast here. Absolutely. I think that uh, we take a look here. I want to show, uh, let's see, top eight finishes in our tournament. These, these are the names of guys that have the most top, uh, I'm sorry, top four finishes as we have a nice dot right there. Julio Jones gives Clef the touchdown lead here. Uh, these are the names that have the most top four finishes in Friday Night Football. D. Croft. This is a guy that did not have a name before Madden 19. I.B. Strafing definitely had a name before uh, Friday Night Football. I, I, I mean, he's been a great player for years. Uh, Clef, a guy that we talked about a lot already. I mean, kind of making his name. Joe Rice, he came on to the scene at the end of Madden 17. K. Mac, again, another guy that was more, more or less a mutt weekend league player. Now he's viewed as one of the top competitive Madden players in the world. Absolutely. J. J. Wall, um, you know, he's up there. Uh, fancy. Uh, I mean, how many names did I name of the goats? I mean, obviously we got guys that do stay off, you know, off the radar. You know, there's guys like Skimbo that don't play a lot. But how many names mm -hmm. did I just name that are like, you know, top 10 players all time? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's incredible that you look at the names. This is the new crop of players that... The one thing that I would love to stress is that it's invaluable getting these reps. These guys are, are making a name for themselves, right? And they're playing the best of the best of the best. And they're making the name stuff in tournament situations, pressure situations. So when they get to live events in the MCS, they're tournament ready. And you really can't put, you know, if, if you're going to tell me if I'm, I'm betting on somebody that's been in our tournaments over and over again and proven themselves – or somebody that it's been in an MCS event that hasn't done all these tournaments, I'm going to go with the tournament ready guy. And, you know, it's just something that, um, you know, it's, it's a great thing for people to want to, you know, build their brand, but as, as well as, as get the best reps they can possible. I'm going to give you the top names by win percentage, uh, minimum five games, D Croft, IB strafing skins, cleft, uh, cleft, dreamy, J wall, Joe Rice, Fancy, K Mac, Canes, Dubby, you come in, you come in yourself, you come in at uh, sixty-seven percent, but you've only played three games, so I'm going to leave you off the list. Boogs, sixty-seven percent, 
man, this is becoming a shootout over here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Play after play after play. And you're going to see that showboat after showboat. This is starting to get, you can tell that they're getting a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> the tension's growing. I mean, uh, he showboated on those last touchdown Decroft did, and Clef went right back to it. So you can see that, you know, um, I, I think they're getting in each other's heads. And, and uh, they're, they're not only trying to win, but they're trying to win with style. Anything your Julio can do, mine can do too. Uh, I mean, back to back, <laughs> set like 70 plus yard touchdowns right there. Uh, so mm-hmm. now clap back up by seven, plenty of ball game left. Uh, you look at the game trends there, 204 yards through the air for Clef, uh, 175. Uh, mainly on the ground slash checkdowns for D. Croft. Uh, so we got a long way to go, and that's unfortunate. No block on the D tackle. Inside zone gets shut down. Yeah, that is tough. You can see that line 10 for 33. Uh, we talked about this in the last um, Friday night film study where D. Croft likes to establish his run. He likes to stick with it. You know, even though he's only got uh, 33 yards, he's got 10 carries. He likes to make sure he establishes it. That definitely puts him in a bad situation, second and 13. You know, just makes it a little bit tougher for him to run the offense that he wants when he's going backwards on first down. Third and 16. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Third and 16. I have, you know, I have a I have a cough button on the, the Twitch broadcast. <laughs> I need to get my home set up like like the mutt, the Mutthead studio. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm not coughing over that. But um Third and sixteen here for D. Crop. This is uh, this is probably the one weakness I've seen in his game. If is being able to watch a lot of him through these events, um, he is not equipped for for third and like ten plus. He's just not. I mean, he, yeah. he's got crossing routes like anyone else does. But mm-hmm. uh, once you figure out, you know, this is his go to. He he hasn't really had a lot for the third and long. And now we got fourth and sixteen. Yeah, the vertical game is a little bit of if, – if, if there is a weakness. And I hate to say there's a weakness in people's games. I mean, the guy's got a 14-game winning streak. We're talking <laughs> right. about his, his accolades. But, yes, his strength, let's put it that way, is to keep the down and distance shorter, right? So you can see that here. Um, that was a ridiculously talented uh, third down – or fourth down call right there. That playmaker on the square end was nice. Just dropped it mm-hmm. in traffic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he definitely had something dialed up for it. And he comes from a really um, up and coming, um, you know, org with the TNC right now where all those players there are, are are definitely great minds. So I know he's got things to dial up, but I think his comfort zone is to keep the down and distance shorter. You know, the dink and dunks, the five to six yard runs, he tends to get more uh, breakout runs than he does deep passes. And, you know, that's just a style. Um, and it's not that he's not good at passing. It's just something that I think if, if we're going to – from tendencies that we've watched him, he's definitely uh, – when he stays ahead of the down and distance, he's at his best. It's, I mean, it's almost a one plus one equals two. There's really nobody out there that likes to be in fourth down and 16. But, uh, you yeah. know, uh, <laughs> there are some players, you know, Clef, for instance, you would bet on him picking up a fourth down and 16 more than most because he's a very aerial uh, player. Um, mm-hmm. Man, great stick work in the pocket, but yeah. not going to get the ball away. Absolutely. I think that was one of those tough ones where um, you probably, once you saw that it broke down, you probably want to throw that ball away. Uh, He's on the cusp of uh, field goal range. He should be able to hit a field goal at 51 with any uh, player, but it really limits his ability here. Now, he's got to think in the back of his mind, I can't lose anymore. I'll tell you what, I'm running the ball right here. Yeah. I would I would suggest the same thing. Go up ten going into the fourth quarter, um, or something very very. um, You went right to the draw, which is was definitely what he should have done. um, You know, just to get ensure that he gets the field goal. You know, he he ended up putting himself in that position by not throwing the ball away, but he made the right call the second time around. And those are the small things that make a huge difference in competitive Madden. Um, You know, a lot of players allow bad decisions to snowball. Uh, and then you're in a spot where you're in that fourth down and 16. Well, I mean, he was in third and 24, 51 yard field goal. If you lose yards, like you said, a lot of guys only carry a kicker and salary cap that can make 53, 54 at most. So mm-hmm. the run call is 100% the call right there. And that's just smart Madden right there. I mean, that, that's smart football. I mean, I would expect a coach in real life to make that call, which Clef absolutely. is a coach in real life. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that talks about you know, the comfortableness of a tournament, knowing, you know, that he can think logically and, and put himself in the best positions when it needs to be. I mean, a 10 point uh, lead is much uh, better cushion than trying to force, you know, something down the field in that situation. So, you know, he, he got himself in a great spot. It's, it's Decroft's uh, time to see if he can respond. And, uh, you know, he's got to go to that passing game to get that to get those quick uh, scores, which again is a little bit out of his element. I really like what I'm seeing out of Clef right here. So in my mind, I can't actually see what Decroft is doing adjustment wise, but just 
from playing the game a ton. Um, what I'm picking up on is he's probably slide protecting left to pick up mm -hmm. the loop. And then because his user is blitzing, it's causing a really, really weird blitz pickup on that right. You saw that A gap on the previous play. Uh, yep. Good good strike right there, though, to uh, pick up the first down out towards midfield, coming up on eight seconds left in the third quarter. I think you, you picked up on an excellent point there. You know, you've got the loop shed D out of the big nickel over G. Because it's going to the left, he is going to slide left. That's one of the more popular ways of picking it up, a slide towards um, the defensive tackle that's looping. So by knowing that, Clef is just one step ahead. And that's that's what's great about you know players that um, – can uh, understand what people are doing to, to stop the adjustment. They're just going to be, you know, doing something to now, what are you going to do to stop that? Now you're seeing D Croft go into his own mind right here, uh, going with the inside zone flipped away from the strength. I mean, you can tell he's running that loop off the left side out of the, the over G now Clef realizing that he was weak to the inside zone. He's going back to the three, three, five. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see that we uh, talked about how that stat line was 10 carries for 33 yards for Decroft. Now he's got 12 carries for 66. That's what he, you know, uh, good players do is stick to their game, know that that's their strength. And, you know, um, he's got to make sure that he sprinkles it in in order to, to set up his passing. I asked for a uh, slump last week. I was being sarcastic to insert the uh, the uh, Denzel Washington line from uh, Remember the Titans about Novocaine. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it definitely, I mean, it's really what it is. I mean, it, a lot of players give up. I mean, shoot, a lot of players give up after two runs that haven't picked up any good gains. Yeah, I mean, he stuck with it for like 12 runs before he got his first big gain. Absolutely. And I think that's, um, you know, the consistency of his game. I think um, we've been watching him, you know, pretty closely over the last three weeks. And he's been on a couple of our film studies because of the success he's had. And it's time after time is I'm going to play my way. And um, the run game is a big part of that. And you know, kudos to him. He's going to be successful for a long time because he, he definitely understands um, the best way that uh, he, he's going to have success for himself. So I'm just going to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say 100% that this was stolen, but I was watching Dubby last night play on stream. And mm -hmm. that route combination that D. Croft just ran against Clef right there, Dubby was ripping that that route combination out in the red zone last night. So, and I thought, wow, that was, I really like that, that little high point, kind of reminiscent of yeah. a problem right in the Madden 13 championship, the Virgin Gaming Madden championship mm -hmm. out in Las Vegas. Kind of did a little uh, front of the end zone slot rocket from the uh, slot receiver, uh, kind of similar to that right there. Very nice. I mean, that's that's the influence that these tournaments are having. We're getting a lot of people that are tuning into them that are in the professional scene because um, they want to see what's what's something that they can um, learn from. Like everybody's got their own unique style. A lot of people say, you know, it's the same plays over and over and over again. That's definitely not the truth. It's something that you know people are always innovating and, and changing up their things. Yes, they've got styles to themselves, but something as simple as that—you add one little wrinkle to your red zone. And, you know, people pay attention to it and, and want to look at uh, how can they incorporate to their game. Look at that run pass ratio. It was 18 passes to two runs. He's up by three. This is the four minute drill and he doesn't care. He's going down the field to Julio Jones. Decroft pretty fortunate he didn't give that up on the last play. Uh, uh -huh. But goes right back to Julio, calls number 11 again. And now mm -hmm. he's got himself in third down and short. Yeah, that was that clear out play. It looks like he's in the Buccaneers playbook. It's one of those that uh, Pavon runs a lot. Talk about something that uh, people are, you know, see something that's successful and comes back. It's actually an option route where that player turns around and it's, it gets a really nice tender spot in most defenses. Um, and uh, because of that deep post route that's connected with that play, it makes it very tough for a user to um, be able to cover both. And, you know, he went to it in a time where he needed to get the, uh, the down and distance shorter. Great timing pattern underneath there. Uh, ran kind of a fork concept, deep post over the middle, uh, run in a corner, and then he had something in the flat, and then a little backside shallow cross, and uh, that was a tight window, but he hit it right there for the first down. I, I think the thing is with guys, I, I would much rather face a balanced offense uh, in the milk game because a lot of times those types of players like to just go straight up to what is the, what is the book call, what do most smart coaches call Clef is airing it out yeah. every single time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sometimes when you go against somebody who's got a run ability, you can kind of, you know, say, you know what, I'm going to sell out a little bit on the run. Maybe I can get a free first and second down to where I got only have to hold them on one pass play. When somebody's airing it out and, and not 
you know, going away from that style. Uh, you got to hold them three plays in a row, if not four, um, to hold them to a first down because of the way that, you know, they can extend the field with their passing game. Not to mention Lamar Jackson, as you saw in that last play. Might have been fortunate that he didn't fumble that ball right there. Uh, probably a bad break there for D. Crop. Now he's going to the run game now that he's in mm-hmm. field goal range. Absolutely. If you saw a couple plays earlier, um, he did put his uh, his team on conservative ball handling. So he's he's definitely made that conscious that even if he's passing, um, he doesn't want to give up anything. So he's probably not going to have any you know ability to really break off anything special. But um, you should try to play conservative here and uh, at the very least um, close this out with a field goal and give uh, Decroft uh, limited time to, to have to go the length of the field. Nose tackle comes through almost unblocked, and Lamar Jackson makes the play of the tournament, shreds it, and then there's Tyree Kill in the back of the end zone, and that's really, really, really bad news for DeCroft. Yeah, very unfortunate. He he did a really good job of uh, handling that play and, and, and should have had the stop there. I mean, that's demoralizing from a player because, I mean, it looks like uh, it's a, a perfect timing of when he was able to break that tackle – um, his receiver got loose up the field and, and it was clear as day. It wasn't like um, that type of read was tough to make. You could see that he was all by himself. He composed himself, made that throw. It went from a, a potential stop to down 10 again. So now Decroft down by 10 once again is going to go back to work. And again, asking him to go vertical, 75 yards, maintain timeouts. This is just not. This is just not his game. It's not really anybody's game. I mean, it, it, it is to a degree. Like Clef is uh, equipped to do something like that, but mm-hmm. it, it's just the ball control. It's just this is how I play personally. Like I'm a very dink and dunk oriented ball control offense. This is the worst spot to feel. Like you feel defeated in, in spots like this. Absolutely, and I think um, what it does, it also changes the type of defenses looks that you've been getting. As you can see, you end up getting a tipped pick there. But you know, when you can control the ball uh, on the ground. You know, people can't, you know, just send their corners outside and, and basically uh, be as aggressive because, you know, if, if they can just run inside uh, on you and, and basically uh, control the game in a different way. When when there's a good opportunity to not run and you know that as a defender, um, you can get a little bit more aggressive. And that, that puts him just in a bad spot when um, you can't have the same type of um, success that you would have if you're mixing it up from a player like him. So we said it when Clef lost to Hollywood in Friday Night Football number one in the finals that this would not be the end of Clef, and uh, it, it took nine more. It took nine more, but he finally got it, and uh, Clef is going to end up being your Friday Night Football number ten champion. Absolutely, you got to tip your cap to him. Uh, he's now eighteen and six in our Friday Night Football. Uh, it's a seventy-five percent win uh, percentage. But what's great about what he's been? He's been one of our most consistent players. Um, he's been in our tournament seven times, and of those seven times, I, I believe he's been in the top eight five of them. So that means he's winning his first two against elite competition five out of seven times. And then we've already mentioned how much he's been in the top four, how many times he's been in our final game. You know, consistency has definitely been the the best word to say for both these players, but at such a high level that it's definitely worth the praise. And you've definitely heard us talk about it. And, um, you know, something that you're really going to want to tune in for each of our Friday night footballs to see how long they can keep up this consistency. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so again, just to reiterate, our top win percentage competitors are now Decroft with 85%, 17 and 3. Shout out to Truzy with a sub. <laughs> Watch a D Clef. Uh, D, I'm sorry, not D Clef. We'll just combine them. That'd be one hell of a Madden player, D Clef. Um, <laughs> uh, we're watching Clef's stream. Uh, but D Croft, 85 win percentage. Strafe in 82%. Uh, 82%. Skins, 80%, but that's on five games. You've got a 75% win percentage. Man, that crystal. Have you ever had crystal? I have. There's actually one not too far from me. I'm actually a big fan of the chicken minis uh, rather than the burgers. Don't get me wrong. I like the burgers, but um, yeah, I, I, I can uh, put back some some crystals for sure. Yeah, we got White Castle down here. And the obligatory shout outs to Grubhub, guys. Uh, Friday Night Football is brought to you by Mutthead, but it is sponsored by Grubhub. And 
I don't know. Are we allowed? Are we allowed to announce this yet? I, I bel- I'm going to take a risk. Uh, hopefully, our boss doesn't get mad at us. We're we're proud to announce that we are extended for nine more of these suckers. So we've got Excellent. our original our original agreement with Grubhub was for uh, nine events, taking us up through Friday Night Football number twelve, I believe. Um, so now we're pleased to announce that we're going to have nine more. So May and June, more Friday Night Football coming. That is amazing. It's something that I'm proud to be a part of. I know you are as well. Um, just being uh, you know, special thanks to Grubhub for making Madden um, as relevant as possible for as long as possible. I think that's just amazing that we're going to be able to have competitive Madden all the way through June having these tournaments. Um, I'm excited for it. Uh, we always see players that that pop out of nowhere each year that have been grinding it and just kind of um, you know basically found their stride late in the year. And I'm hoping to, that we, we can get some of that. If some of you guys feel that uh, – you are um, having that uh, success. Make sure that you fill out the form on Mudhead, and uh, we can see you in one of these tournaments as well. Yep, go to www.mudhead.com. Go to the Mudhead League tab, top right of the screen. Click on the Mudhead League tab, and down at the bottom of the page is the application. Fill that out. We look at it every single week. As we talked about, we've had, what, 93 competitors in this event? 93 unique competitors in this event. So we are the community's tournament by the community for the community. Um, Again, guys, I'm not blowing smoke up your ears when I say this. You guys have been crushing it out there for for Grubhub. Now, I can't give too much detail, but I'll tell you this. They are extremely happy with, with, you know, you guys have been supporting them. They've been supporting us. Friday nights, use that code TOUCHDOWN. $10 off your first first order, $15 or more. We hope to see you guys on Friday Night Football. I'll be back in the booth. You saw Stiff and Boogs. I'm going to be back with Boogs for the next two weeks. And then we're going to get that campaign rolling for nine more starting in May. So I'm really, really excited for that. Make sure you guys tune in. Twitch.tv slash MuttheadTV. We will see you guys Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7 Central. That's 5 West Coast time. All right, guys. We'll talk to you next week with another Friday Night Film Study. For AntCap, this is Zan. Get in the lab and good luck. If you like this video, check out one of the videos on your screen right now. And for more in-depth analysis, visit www.playbook.gg for detailed game plans written by pro Madden players. Master the game with playbook.gg.